for our spinner lab where we looked at the relationship between the velocity and time for an object moving down an incline and speeding up. When we looked at all of our whiteboards, they fell into basic two categories. Um, the velocities all started at about zero and increased linearly over time. So there was a consistent increase in speed or velocity. And some of the slopes were a little bit smaller, uh, between 0.3 and 0.4 centimeters per second per second, and some of them were a little bit steeper. And we realized that the ones with a smaller slope or a smaller change in velocity each second uh, had a smaller incline that their spinner went down. And the slopes with the larger values, the steeper lines, had the steeper slopes. That'll come into play later. So let's write down the equation of the line, and this is something that you should have, have, should have had written on your whiteboard. So remember, you always start with y equals mx plus b. And we're going to write this for the red line, uh, an a sample one, that a spinner on the large incline. So the equation looks something like this. Velocity, or v, is equal to 0.5 centimeters per second per second multiplied by time plus 0 centimeters per second. If you look, the slope is a half a centimeter per second every second because if you start at 0, in one second of time, the increase in velocity is a half a centimeter per second. So it's half a centimeter per second for this one second, another half a centimeter per second for that one second, another half a centimeter for the next second, and so on. It says continual increase of a half of a centimeter per second for each second of motion. <clears throat> so the question is, what is the slope of the velocity versus time graph? We discussed the fact that this tells you, this number, it tells you how much your velocity increases each second, like we just talked about. For the red line, it's moving, it's getting faster by a half a centimeter per second every second that the spinner is moving. When we looked at the smaller inclines, or some of the groups with the smaller slopes, notice that every second of motion, it is not increasing by half a centimeter per second, it's actually only increasing by about a quarter of a centimeter per second every second that it's moved. So it has a smaller increase in velocity each second. Well, the slope, which you calculate by changing, taking like a change in velocity divided by a change in time, we defined as the acceleration. So the acceleration is how much your velocity changes each second and the slope of our line tells us that. When you look at the units of acceleration, <clears throat> Um, you get centimeters per second for each second, or how much the velocity changes for each one second of time. You simplify that, um, you get two seconds on the bottom, and it's the same thing as centimeters divided by seconds squared. Now, when you see a distance unit over a squared time unit, you know that you're looking at an acceleration value. And any physics textbook you look at, or other times you're, you're dealing with accelerations, this is typically how acceleration is written. But in this class, I'd like you just to don't simplify it. Stick with these units because it reminds you that an acceleration unit, which is this, is some amount of velocity change for every one second of time. The last question we talked about and discussed was this. What is the y-intercept of the velocity graph, and what does that tell us about the motion of the object? Well, the y-intercept, I mean, look at each line, it's where... The, the value of the velocity when the time is zero, so where it crosses that y-axis. And all of the groups got numbers close to zero, and we said that it should be zero logically because when you started your spinner at time zero, the spinner started from rest, so it would have a zero velocity. So logically we can conclude that the y-intercept is insignificant or zero because for a zero time, you would have a zero velocity. So we can take this one step further. Now that we know that the slope is equal to our acceleration and the y-intercept is equal to our initial velocity, the general equation becomes that velocity is equal to the acceleration of an object multiplied by the time it's moving for plus its initial velocity. And we can use this to now predict how fast something is moving at any time if we know its rate of velocity change or acceleration and how fast it was going or its initial velocity. 
So with that, you should now be able to finish your conclusion questions for the formal lab report for the incline lab.